I'm Pam Fox at pamfox.org and in tonight's video I'm going to be making taco salad. This is one of my absolute favorite meals. It has been for Mexican food just in general has been one of my favorite things to eat for a really long time. But um, as far as plant-based eating goes, I would say that Mexican food is one of the most versatile and flexible styles of food that you can eat within the, the plant-based eating. Um, just because there's so many different things that you can do and with spices and herbs you can really create um, the same flavors that you're used to with Mexican food. Now tonight's taco salad is going to be um, uh, of course removing all common trigger foods so it's going to be a little bit different but I, th I think it's going to be still be really delicious. Um, it's just going to be a little bit different and that's the the mindset that we have to have that just because it's not exactly the same to what we love and what we're used to it doesn't mean that it's not exceptionally good so um happy valentine's day i'm wearing my i heart Dwayne t-shirt um that's my husband in case you didn't know so we're gonna get started i'm actually gonna be making this in the instant pot tonight and we're gonna start with the peppers and leeks and i actually made a big pot of um uh, Cuban beans yesterday and I put my leek in that so I'm actually just going to be doing peppers for tonight because the leeks are already in the beans. So I went to the store today to pick up some bell pepper because I was out and the bell pepper was $5.99 a pound. And that bell pepper, I weighed it, is about a half a, half a pound, I think. So you're looking at $3 for one bell pepper. Now they also have this bag of organic baby bell peppers for $3. So I got that instead, of course. All right, so when I'm doing a taco salad, I like to kind of chop everything up in bite-sized pieces. Now I am gonna be cooking this, and you know, this can be done, I was saying before, um, you know, this is very flexible. You could do this raw, and a lot of people do, do it raw. Um, I've made this, this salad raw before, and it's wonderful. Um, but for those of you with reflux, um, by cooking, your peppers and your leeks, that's gonna make them a little bit more digestible, of course. And then, you know, that little bit of carminative effect that we talked about before, that's in onions and garlic. That is in the leek, leeks as well. It's just, it's much milder. And so um, by cooking your garlic, say for example, your garlic and onions, that's going to reduce that effect a little bit and make it, um, for some, make it tolerable for others not it just depends uh, on the person some people with reflux can tolerate garlic and onions just fine even raw most people can't i was one of those people that could never tolerate especially raw onions i still really don't like raw onions all right like i said i'm going to be using my instant pot tonight this is my kitchen is small and i've just become accustomed doing everything in the Instant Pot. It's nice because it's a stainless steel kettle, which means cooking without oil is really, really simple. So like I said, I already put the leeks when I cooked my um, my beans yesterday. I made a big pot of beans in the Instant Pot, so I'm not going to be adding that in tonight. But this, um, I am going to be putting in mushrooms. Hope everyone's having a wonderful Valentine's Day. I myself have never really, really gotten into Valentine's Day. Um, I don't know, I was a single parent for so long and I always made sure to do something nice for my kids. And now that they're grown and moved out, I still um, I send them a little care package every year. And I forgot what day it was today until I got up this morning. Kind of Valentine's Day kind of snuck up on me. So I did not send them a care package, but I did go shopping today and I picked up a few things. So I'm just going to stick it in the mail tomorrow. It's just going to get there late. All right, so in go the mushrooms. Whoops. So basically, 
basically this taco salad, this is just gonna take minutes to throw together. Um, but I'm gonna be cooking, hi Julie. I do too, I love my Instant Pot. I'm gonna be cooking this kind of this, I don't know, this warm taco salad and then I'm gonna be serving it on a bed of greens with avocado and cilantro. You can top it with olives. Um, what's next? Let's put in, I'm actually gonna put in, um, I already rinsed this spinach, but I'm just gonna put in about half of this bundle of spinach. You put in lots if you want to, it's, you know, it, it cooks down. So I'm just gonna give this a small chop. I miss composting when we used to live in a normal house. <laughs> I was really big into composting. Ooh, Julie went out to dinner last night. Awesome. Um, but now that I live in an apartment, I just, I don't bother with it. I would have to bundle everything up and take it to somebody's farm or something like that. There's just, with as much as I juice and do smoothies and eat bananas, there's just, there's so much. My compost pile is huge at my house, so there's just nothing. I wouldn't be able to do anything with it other than take it to somebody else's house. So it just goes in the garbage. Um, anyway, so, okay, so I've got that going. I'm going to put in, uh, these are some of the beans that I made yesterday. They're just pinto beans. I'm going to throw, I'm just going to put the whole thing in there. And then I'm going to put in, um, Normally I would put in about a cup of corn. I don't have any frozen corn. These organic um, cans of corn were on sale, so I stocked up on those. And like I say, normally I would just put in about a cup, but I'm just gonna throw the whole thing in because I really love corn. And because I don't really know that I would use that leftover in the next couple of days. All right, so this is just on the saute function right now. And there's all the goodies. That's basically my taco salad. So um, I'm just going to add in some cumin, which is approved in this challenge. I'm going to do a heaping teaspoon. And I'm going to add in some sumac. Are any of you trying the sumac? I have never heard of it before this challenge. It's a lemony Mediterranean spice. So, and it is approved. And, um, you know, since we're not going to be putting any lemon over this taco salad, we just kind of put it in as a herb. And that smells wonderful. All right, that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna put the lid on this. Actually, I'm gonna, I have leftover rice here from the other night at a restaurant. I'm just gonna put that right in there on top. Usually when I go to this one Thai food restaurant, I order extra rice. I'm just going to put that one on top to kind of re-moisten that, and it'll just kind of steam in there on top. And I'm going to push pressure cooker for just a couple minutes. This is really done. I'm just going to kind of heat it through and probably just three minutes. Um, and so I'm going to get some avocado ready. So this is my toppings now. It's going to be the avocado. Normally I might do like a guacamole and throw that on there, but really I love avocado so much. If it's a good avocado, and this is, they're really good right now. I will just chop it up and throw it on. And don't not even bother with making a guacamole. So I just have scored that, and now I'm just going to scoop it out. 
and I get it ready so that when we plate this up, it's ready to go. And I'm just gonna get a little bit of the cilantro ready to go as well. Not everybody likes cilantro, but I think it really adds a lot to any Mexican dish and other dishes as well. To me, there's no such thing as too much cilantro. So I just made enough for me right there. Okay, so I think, did I miss anything? I think that's going to be it. We're going to go ahead and just let that cook for a couple of minutes and in the meantime um, we'll move on to tonight's topic. Oh, I've never tried that Julie. Julie says her new favorite thing is avocado toast topped with sauerkraut. That sounds amazing. That's so funny because I recently this week I discovered avocado toast topped with pickles. These are some actually fermented pickles. So they're not like, you know, like um, shelf stable, they're refrigerator pickles, but they're, they're, but they're dill, they're dill pick, they're fermented pickles, fermented dill pickles. Just that sauerkraut would be really good. So that saltiness, um, yeah, that sounds wonderful. I'm glad you can tolerate fermented foods, Julie. That's wonderful. Keep eating your fermented foods. Okay, so tonight's topic is, is a vegan diet extreme? Is plant-based eating extreme? And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because a lot of people are sick and they've maybe heard about plant-based nutrition and how it's just kind of this miracle diet that's helping people overcome a variety of conditions um, and helping them heal and get off their medications, heal from lifelong conditions sometimes and heal from terminal conditions sometimes. That's not always the case. Um, and so people hear these stories and they think, well, I could never do that diet. It's too extreme. I would never be able to stay on that kind of a diet long term because I just know I couldn't do it. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is one, I, that was that was my mindset. Like for a year, I kept coming back to this idea of plant-based nutrition for my GERD because I was at my wit's end I was at my wit's end and I've had a long list of health conditions my whole life. So I've dealt with being sick. That's been my norm for a very long time. But for me, the GERD, it was, it was messing with my mind. Like it was, it was inescapable for me. Like I, you people talk about having flares. I was symptomatic pretty much all the time when I had GERD. I was symptomatic pretty much all the time. And I'm actually really thankful for that now because if it hadn't been for that, I would, I would just would have been lazy and taken a drug and just, dealt with it and just you know this is just my norm but because it was driving me mad I desperately sought out answers I desperately when I would have a question I would search until I would find an answer and when I would find an answer usually more questions would arise and I would search until I found answers to those and that's what led me to discovering that I had a hiatal hernia and that's what led me to discovering how to reverse my hiatal hernia and develop the protocol that I did and that enabled me to be able to really take a completely different change in my life, a, a, a new career path. Um, I quit a, a job that I loved and that I'd been at for a very long time and started to pursue, you know, just my, my desire of being a, a natural healer, helping people heal in natural and effective ways. It's kind of my, that's my motto. I, I want to help people heal in natural and effective ways. So anyway, long story short, um, when I was getting into this idea of trying a plant-based diet, I thought there's no point of even trying. There's no way I could stick to that long term. It's just too extreme. I've been on diets before. I know how hard they are to stick to, um, especially if you're hungry, especially if you're counting calories or restricting calories or cutting out large portions of your food. I know what that's like and how, how difficult that makes it. And so I finally came to a point where I realized, you know, I'm just going to try this for 30 days. I, I know I can try anything for 30 days and I'm just going to see what, what, if anything, it does for me. Because that's the only way you'll know, right, is try something. 
It's the only way you'll know if, what it will do for you is to try it. And I really wanted to try it like 100%. I didn't just want to maybe do meatless Mondays or just cut out dairy or just do every other day or, you know, kind of customize a plant-based diet that needed, met my needs. I wanted to do a wholehearted, 100% full-fledged plant-based diet to see what a plant-based diet could do for me. That way I couldn't, after 30 days, say, yeah, I tried that plant-based diet. It didn't work for me. I wanted to really, really try it. And so that's what I did. And I kind of considered it a 30 day experiment. And I'm telling you, like, I, I just, I felt so much better within days and it, and, and it wasn't my GERD, <laughs> my GERD improved, but I had other conditions, other conditions that just started to vanish and vanish and vanish. And so of course, after 30 days, I was like, well, I'm going to do another 30 days. And after 60 days, I, there was just no, there was just no going back. There was just no going back. And so, um, Excuse me. Excuse me. I'll oh, get the phone too far away. There we go. Okay, so anyway, so I just wanted to talk about some recommendations, some things that really helped me to um, stick to this diet in the beginning. It's not hard now. I've been doing it. It'll be five years in July, and it's it's you know, it's just the way I eat. There's just there's absolutely nothing hard about it. I need a new phone. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing hard about it. It's entirely enjoyable and it's just the way I eat. I don't feel like I'm on a diet. Hi, Susan. So I'm going to give um, three, um, I'm going to go through three different ways that you can be successful for long-term success on a plant-based diet. And really it starts with um, education. It starts with education and I'm going to be listing a bunch of different resources. You guys can write those down or I will I will link them after the live, hopefully tonight, but maybe not tonight, but probably tonight. I'll go back in afterwards and I will link all of these different things that I'm recommending that you check out. So first of all, when it comes to education, there are a lot, a lot of different resources. So I'm just going to go through a few of my favorites now, but there are so many more even beyond the ones I'm going to mention tonight. So there are four different documentaries that you can watch that I highly recommend. Three of them are on Netflix. So you do have to have a net Netflix account, but I'm going to go on to talk about different websites that you can check out and books that you can look at as well. So if you don't have a Netflix account, that's okay. So the three, the first three documentaries, you've probably heard of them. You may have even seen them are Forks Over Knives, Cowspiracy, and What the Health. Okay. And so um, these, these documentaries are excellent. They are filled with scientific research. They are filled with um, doctors and experts from around the world. They are filled with um, testimonies from people who went on a plant-based diet. They're really, really well done documentaries. Now, that being said, there are people out there that have tried to and have said that they've debunked these documentaries. And <laughs> It's really interesting, isn't it? You're always going to have he said, he said, what they said, what they said. Um, but there's, there's, it's, it's all, it's all resource. Like there's all of the, um, the studies, like for these documentaries, they're sourced right in the documentary. Um, there's just, there's just no debunking. It's just, it's just plain truthful information is what is in these documentaries. And it's not all, and these three documentaries are about, um, well, cowspiracy is about your health, but it's also about the environment. And what the health is about, um, primarily is about health and nutrition. And then um, Forks Over Nice is also about health and nutrition. So there's a fourth documentary that's about health and animal welfare. And what these four documentaries and that the fourth one is called earthlings and it's actually free and it's on youtube so you can go watch it right now if you want to um it's <laughs> it's a documentary that took me about a year and a half before i even had the courage to sit down and watch it because it's a hard documentary to watch it's about animal welfare so it's it's a behind the scenes look at what is happening in factory farms and factory farms is where the vast majority of your meat dairy and eggs and other animal products come from. It comes from factory farming, okay? It's where the, ma the vast majority of those foods come from. Um, and it's not, and it's not, they're not happy places. <laughs> they're not happy farms. 
And I've never even been a person who's really, really into animal advocacy or I, I've been allergic to animals my whole life. So I've stayed away from them my whole life. I, you know, I just, I mean, I didn't even pet a cat. I, the first time I pet a cat in my adult life was just a couple of years ago. I was like, oh my gosh, they're so soft. Um, because I was able to overcome my allergies and my asthma on a plant-based diet. Um, so, so yeah, those are four documentaries that you can check out. I highly recommend them. They're very well done and they're, they're very profound and they can be extremely life-changing, life-changing and very eye-opening in terms of just telling you the truth, telling you the truth. Um, about nutrition, about your health, about the environment, the effects of factory farming on the environment, and of course the effects of factory farming on animals. Um, so those you can check out if you want to watch something on TV or on your computer. So also as far as educating yourself, like I said, there's a lot of websites. I'm going to list a couple here, and again I'll link these afterwards in the description box below. But the, the first one is called the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. The second one is called nutritionfacts.org. The third one is called Dr. John McDougall. And all three of these sites, well, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine and Dr. John McDougall's website both have testimonials, okay, from people like me who went on a plant-based diet and they just described their experience. They have a lot of education, educational resources, and they have recipes. Okay, so those are a great place to start for education. Um, nutritionfacts.org is a site that summarizes the medical research in terms of health and nutrition. So they summarize the studies so that you don't have to read the entire study yourself. They're cited, you can go in and read the entire study yourself, but they just, they do these great video summaries of the data, okay? So that's a great place if you're really into the science, what the science says. You can just go in there and um, type in whatever your question is regarding, you know, whether it's type 2 diabetes, fibromyalgia, the gut microbiome, whatever question you have about health, you can type that in the search bar. And if, if they've done a video on that, that will come up. You saw the game changers at the Sundance. Oh, I haven't seen the game changers. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. The benefits of a plant based diet for athletes. Yeah, I've heard all about it. I can't wait to see it. Um, so, um, so yeah, nutritionfacts.org. And the final website I want to turn you guys on to is actually a YouTube channel called The Real Truth About Health. And I love this site if I've got a little bit more time. And it's just video after video of interview after interview of doctors and experts, medical experts, researchers, interviews with people about this topic, about plant-based nutrition and how it's helping people heal. <laughs> how it's helping people heal. And so these are doctors who ascribe to this idea that there is great power in food and they use that with their patients and their patients are getting the results that they want, which is healing, okay? So, so that's called The Real Truth About Health, and that's on YouTube. So I will be sure and link those. So that's number one, is education. Be hungry for education when it comes to your health and nutrition, because there's great power in food. Why is my phone keep doing this? I'm just going to ignore it. Okay, so up next... Um, are some so I went through some videos, some documentaries. I discussed some websites. This book is called The Starch Solution by Dr. John McDougall. So I already mentioned him and his website. This is a phenomenal book. It will teach you a lot about plant-based nutrition, and there's a lot of great recipes in here, as, as well as his website. This book is by Dr. Neil Barnard. I know everything's backwards. I apologize. That's why I'm holding it here. If you read it long enough, you can figure it out, but I will link these below. And this one is um, Program for Reversing Diabetes, another doctor describes to plant-based nutrition and reversing type 2 diabetes in his patients, not just managing it with drugs, but reversing the condition so that they can get off of their drugs. 
Okay, this one is by Dr. Garth Davis and it's called Protein Aholic. He's another great one that you can follow, I think, on Facebook. He, on his lunch break, sometimes he'll pop onto Facebook and do a live. He's really cocky, but <laughs> a lot of doctors are, but um, this is actually a great book. Um, this one is by Dr. Michael Greger. He is the doctor that um, started NutritionFacts.org, the website I mentioned before. And this book is actually the How Not to Die Cookbook. His original book was called How Not to Die. It came out last year or the year before that. Um, but this is his cookbook. Um, so his recipes are all based on what he calls, I think he calls the daily dozen and getting in, um, you know, these certain daily dozen foods on a, on a daily basis, which is basically fruits, vegetables, beans, nuts, grains, all the good stuff. Um, and this is, well, I'm not going to mention that. That's, that's enough to help you get started. Okay. So documentaries, um, Websites and books. Okay, so that's number one is education. Okay. Number two is inspiration. So getting educated is great to help you succeed on a plant-based diet long-term, but inspiration is going to be beneficial and key as well. So um, for me, like, I, I'm interested in what the science has to say about health and nutrition. But I'm really interested in what people have to say. So, so-and-so went on a plant-based diet and this is what happened. Okay. So-and-so had terminal cancer and they went on a plant-based diet and it's 15 years later and they're still alive and they're thriving. That kind of stuff. That kind of stuff like inspired me when I first started and I needed it. I was, I needed that inspiration because I was scared. Like, you know, when you're told from the time you're born, I can remember growing up on a farm and my mom saying, that livestock animals, their purpose in life was so that we could have food and we need to eat that food. Well, now I know that we don't need to eat that food. It's not necessary for me to eat chicken. It's just not necessary. I can get all of the essential vitamins, minerals, nutrients from plants with one exception and that is vitamin B12, but that's a whole nother issue. That's an issue about um, modern factory or modern farming practices that sterilize the soil because it's a, the vitamin B12 is found in our soil. And so we can take a supplement, we can take a vitamin B12 um, supplement and it's no longer an issue. Um, so we're taught as, as all of our lives from our teachers, our doctors, our parents, our schools, our politicians, they all say, you know, that meat, dairy, and eggs is part of a healthy diet, healthy balanced diet. Um, and so then when you decide that you're going to take the, that part out of your diet, it can be kind of scary. You're like, well, what about protein? And what about calcium? And so that's where that education comes in, okay, to kind of put your mind at ease. Because once you learn the truth, you won't be scared and worried about those things. Um, but like I said, for me, I needed a lot of inspiration. I needed a lot of inspiration to keep me going. And now today, I don't need inspiration. Like, I don't watch, I used to, I watch those videos every day. And so... When I say I watch those videos, um, I'm referring back to Dr. John McDougall's website that I mentioned before. He has a lot of testimonials, a lot of testimonials on his site. And also the Physicians, or no, um, the Forks Over Knives website. They, they used to have tons of what, um, testimonials on their website, but now they have linked them over to their Instagram page. But if you go to the Forks Over Knives website, you should be able to find testimonials there and you should be able to find a link to more testimonials on their Instagram page. And again, it's just, it's in video format, written format, people's stories, people's stories, just like me who had phenomenal results of being on this diet. Okay. So education, inspiration, and hopefully a day will come where you'll be so full of inspiration that you won't need it anymore. You won't need inspiration from other people to keep you going because you'll be so full of it. You'll have enough to give to others. You'll have enough to inspire other people. Um, and so then the third thing that I want to recommend is, um, is what? Is enjoying your food. And so that means that you're going to most likely, unless you're already, you know, an experienced um culinary expert in plant-based nutrition, you're going to have to learn how to cook differently. You're going to learn how to shop differently. You're going to have to learn how to order at a restaurant differently. 
you're going to have to be patient at first because your palate takes time to readjust to eating plant foods. But, but think of this, think if, if you could be on a diet that was so enjoyable that you never felt like you were on a diet and that diet helped you to be an ideal lean weight, that diet helped you to be healthy and to thrive and to have energy and to no longer have to take any medications to rarely ever get sick. And when you do get sick, it's very, very mild and only lasts a few hours when the rest of your friends are taking off days or weeks from work because that, that horrible flu or cold is just lingering on and lingering on. You know, if you could eat a diet that was all of those things and you never missed the foods that you eliminated from that diet, it would be a no brainer, wouldn't it? And so that's the diet you need to create. And so that means your food has to be extremely enjoyable. Most likely you are going to experience health benefits from a plant-based diet. And I've talked about this before, there are exceptions. If your gut microbiota has been completely destroyed, you may have difficulty um, adapting to all of this fiber, but that's another issue. Most people do um, experience improvements in their health on a plant-based diet. And so if you can experience improvements in your health on a plant-based diet, have more energy, get off your medications, be a lean, healthy weight and BMI, and the food is extremely satisfying and delicious and you look forward to every single meal, wouldn't that diet be a total no-brainer? And wouldn't that diet be really easy to follow? Wouldn't that be really easy to follow the rest of your life? It really would, it would be really easy, but we have this mindset that, again, it would be that it's impossible to stick to such an extreme diet that cuts out such a huge part. It cuts out all the best foods, right? We think that meat, dairy and eggs and cheese, those are, you know, ice cream, those are the best foods. Well, the truth is we can, we can still eat those foods. They're just a plant-based version and they can be just as delicious, if not more delicious. Um, so it's really about mindset. It's just have, getting to that place. And you can do that. It just it may just take some time. All right, so let's go ahead and plate this up. I've just got the last of some, uh, these are baby spring mix organic greens. So we're putting together a taco salad. How am I gonna do this? So I'm not gonna show that to you. Basically rice on top. So I'm just going to give this a little bit of a stir, but I don't really want to mix the rice in. So we have beans and corn and peppers and rice and spinach and mushrooms. We have um, sumac and cumin. That looks good. And the rest I'll eat tomorrow for lunch. And we're going to put the avocado and cilantro on there. That looks good. And dinner is served. Now if you guys want to, and I do want to, I always keep these organic um, tortilla chips on hand, sometimes for snacking, but usually for taco salad. Add a little crunch. And these, you know, chips are, you know, they have oil in them. So if oil is one of your triggers and you're trying to really um, adhere to this um, anti-reflux diet, then don't put the chips on. But that adds a little bit of crunch. So yeah, looks good. Let's try it. Ooh. Hot. Mmm. <laughs> it's delicious. It's delicious. Oh boy. It's a good avocado too. I always say you can't beat a good avocado. <laughs> I keep a little fan here to fan my. <laughs> I can.
Andy? So you guys, I wanted to mention that I made my beans the day before because I'm trying to get in the habit of making my own beans. They're so cheap to buy dry beans in bulk. And I have an instant pot. So how you do that, if you've never done it before, is you basically um, soak your beans. Just put them in, um, in a pot of water and soak them the night before you're going to make them. And then you just rinse them and you put them in with, you know, whatever. You can just cook them. Or you can do, like I did Cuban beans, which means there was, I don't know, leeks and peppers and spices and I can't remember what all went in it, but um, make your own beans. It's just really easy and it's cheap. Um, but you can do, you can certainly do, I always stock up on these canned beans, these organic, this is Simple Truth and they're non-PBA cans. And they have... Um, just beans and sea salt. So it's organic, great northern beans, water, and sea salt. And like I was saying, this is really good raw too, like in the summertime. Once you guys have healed and you're beyond your GERD, you know, you could add in tomatoes, you could add in salsa, you could even add in you know, if you, if you fully recover, you could occasionally do things like jalapenos if you like spicy food. And that's the thing you need to make sure you understand is we eliminate spicy foods this month because if you have reflux, your esophagus is injured and damaged. And so we don't want to further irritate that with spicy foods. But once we can get the LES healed, and if you have a hiatal hernia, get your stomach down, and get everything working properly, um, adequate stomach acid, diversified um, microbiome, which will improve with plant-based eating. So diversity of your gut microflora will improve with plant-based eating. Um, then you should be able to start incorporating in some more of these so-called trigger foods that you couldn't eat before. Um, but it needs to be the, the healthier trigger foods. So, you know, things like oranges or tomatoes or, you know, unless you're allergic to oranges or tomatoes. Okay, so I know I said I was going to do the avocado pesto salad today. I just decided to do this because I had all those beans and I had a bunch of avocados that I needed to use up right away. I'm going to freeze the rest of these for that pasta salad and we'll probably do that next week. So make sure and stay tuned for Saturday. I'm going to be doing a Q&A and I'm going to be answering your questions. So I've got a few questions already that I um, that I've started a list of, but if there are others that would make for a good topic, go ahead and post those below, and we'll see if I can't get to those on Saturday. I'll probably go live um, in the morning, um, probably between ten and eleven. You can always catch it on the replay if you can't catch the live. Mm. All right. I didn't know you could freeze avocados either, Candy. Actually, somebody posted the instructions how to do it on the um, on the private Facebook group, the Twenty Eight Day Challenge Facebook group. 
so check that out. I mean, it's, it's not hard. You just, um, I don't think you just stick them in the freezer like this, though. You take them out and you freeze them, you know, kind of like you would bananas. Take the skins off and put them in the freezer and like in a Ziploc bag. Susan asks, do you ever make plant-based smoothies? Yeah, just about almost on a daily basis. I, I keep, um, when bananas go on sale, I buy them all and I just chop them up like this and keep them in these Ziploc bags in my freezer. And that's almost always the base of my smoothie. I might do a date smoothie too. I did a video last week uh, about um, my Daterade recipe, which is dates and water, and that's pretty much it, unless you wanted to add cinnamon, which you wouldn't if you have GERD, but, um, but you can add in all sorts of other fruits. Uh, I like to keep frozen blueberries on hand. I love like a tropical smoothie with like bananas and pineapple and oranges and coconut. Um, I love a green smoothie, which is kind of my go-to, like bananas and either like some type of greens powder or just, you know, real greens like kale or spinach, <clears throat> a couple of dates to sweeten it up a little bit more and water. So yeah, I love plant-based smoothies. They're great because you can get in, um, you know, if you make it big and I usually do like a full size, I usually do about this much, you know, a big jar. But when I first started, I did two or three of these for one meal. And that was, that's the other thing, too, when I was talking before about, you know, being on a diet that you love. Making sure that you're full <laughs> is, such a, um, is such a strategic part of staying on a plant-based diet successfully. Because if you're, if you're not starving all the time, then you're going to be satiated and you're going to be happy with your diet, right? So it's important that you eat enough food. Uh, and when I first started out, that was a lot of food. I've just become more of an intuitive eater now. And I just, I eat until I'm full. And if it's particularly good, I eat more. I try to eat three meals a day, but if I don't, I just eat a bigger meal later. Um, I, that's not advice. I'm just saying that when I started out, I ate a lot of food in order to stay satiated. And that meant really big smoothies with a lot of nutrition in them. Um, a lot of nutrients just because of the sheer volume. So, all right, guys, so I'm going to go and, um, hopefully tonight I will link all those resources below, but if I don't get to it tonight, I will do it tomorrow and be sure to tune in on Saturday for the live Q and a. Thanks for watching.